There are many life-changing lines in the Kingdom Hearts series. One who knows nothing can understand nothing. My friends are my power. <laughs> I'm a fool. But the one that clearly rises above the rest is... Sora! Dinner's ready! Come on down! Sora? This line has so many implications, like what was Sora going to have for dinner? Who was Sora's mom? But instead, I thought about how much would the Kingdom Hearts timeline change if Sora did come down for dinner, and didn't rush off because he saw the storm right away. You might think not too much would change, but believe me, a lot of it does. Just a quick spoiler warning, I'm going to be covering a lot of entries in the Kingdom Hearts timeline, so if you don't want to know anything about any of the games, to quote Tigger, TTFN, ta-ta for now. If you're sticking around, let's continue. It's time to deep dive into what would have happened if Sora had his dinner. So if Sora never looked out the window and went down for his dinner, he would have spent time with his mother and we finally would have seen who she was. As for Sora's father, I feel like in most things the main character is only allowed to have one parent, so we probably wouldn't have seen him. After having a hearty, nutritious meal, Sora would head back up to his room for a good night's rest. As he was prepping for bed, he then noticed the storm, which now would have been worse than when he went in the original timeline. As Sora heads to the island, Riku and Kairi would already be gone, Riku accepting the darkness and vanishing, and Kairi disappearing off the island as well. The Heartless would still attack Sora, and with Ven still lying dormant in Sora's heart, or whether it be through the Keyblade's will, Sora would still obtain his Keyblade, fight some Heartless, and vanish ending up in Traverse Town. Still seems very similar you may think, except for one crucial difference. Since Kairi was already gone when Sora arrived, this scene never happens. <coughs> Kairi would have already been transported off the island to who knows where. We don't even know in original KH1 where she went. Maleficent just finds Kairi and Captain Hook and Riku go to pick her up without telling the audience where she was. And just to clear things up as well, Kairi wouldn't have turned into a Heartless regardless of not going into Sora. A Princess of Heart has such a pure heart that it cannot be consumed by darkness. The whole reason Naminé even exists is because her heart was in Sora's when Sora sacrificed himself to release her heart, thus creating Nominee. Nominee is a nobody that shouldn't even exist, and Diz takes every chance he gets to remind her of this. But in this timeline, Kairi's heart never went into Sora, so Sora never has to stab himself with Riku slash Ansem's Keyblade to free Kairi's heart. This means Nominee is never born, and neither is Roxas. More on that later, though. So the game would still play out similarly, with Sora going to Traverse Town and meeting Donald and Goofy, and going on their adventure sealing keyholes while Sora looks for Kairi and Riku. The next major change would be when Riku and Captain Hook find Kairi. In this version, Kairi still has her heart, so she would wake up on Captain Hook's ship and Riku would talk with her. At this point, Riku hasn't been taken over by Ansem yet and does still genuinely care for Kairi's safety. And while he may have believed Maleficent's lies about Sora not looking for him and Kairi and replacing them with Donald and Goofy, he doesn't 100% believe everything she says either. Why are you doing all this for me? What's the catch? What's the catch? Silly boy. You're like a son to me. I only want you to be happy. I seriously doubt that. Maleficent was just using Riku, and Riku was just using Maleficent to find Kairi. Funny enough, both wanted to find Kairi, just for different reasons. So Maleficent had every intention to help Riku find Kairi, but for her own goals. So after Maleficent, Hook, and Riku find Kairi, she would still be unconscious, and Hook and Maleficent would leave the room and have Riku watch over her. Kairi would then awaken a bit later, and the two of them would be happy to see each other again. Kairi and Riku would talk about what's happened since the island was consumed by darkness, and Riku would tell Kairi Kyrie that Sora didn't care enough to look for them. Kyrie obviously wouldn't believe that to be the case, and talk some sense into Riku. While Riku may have been bitter towards Sora, none of those emotions rolled over into how he felt about Kyrie. And I do believe Riku would listen to Kyrie. Like I said, he still had his doubts about Maleficent, and he only went along with her bull because she kept lying to him about how to wake up Kyrie when she didn't have her heart. So in the original timeline, Riku was desperate to wake Kyrie up. In this timeline, he's not desperate desperate, so he doesn't need to listen to everything Maleficent tells him, since he already distrusts her. Once Kairi would get through to Riku, Maleficent and Hook would check in on them. Riku would tell Maleficent that she wasn't going to take Kairi back to Hollow Bastion, and would say he's not going to believe her lies about Sora anymore. Now you may think it would be a bad idea for Riku to 
say this to them when he's outnumbered and on Hook's ship, but knowing who Riku is, he's a very overconfident person, and at this point, he would believe he has enough strength to beat both Maleficent and Hook. Maleficent and Hook would both fight Riku, and at this point, Riku wouldn't be strong enough to defeat the both of them. He would then lose, and Hook would throw him in the brig, and Maleficent would transport Kairi to Hollow Bastion with her. Eventually, Sora would catch up with Hook's ship and find Peter Pan just like last time. Captain Hook would not have made it back to Hollow Bastion in time because, again, even in the original timeline after finding Kairi, Sora found Hook's ship before he could ever get back to Maleficent with Kairi. Riku and Kairi only got back to Hollow Bastion because Riku did it himself by using his new dark powers. Sora would find Riku in the brig, and they would make up and Riku would fight alongside Sora and defeat Hook, then go to Hollow Bastion together. When they get there, they would team up with the Beast, and the Riku vs Sora fight never happens. But Riku would rush ahead, telling Sora they don't have time to stand around. Riku would do this because he already knows the way to the room where the princesses are, and he would tell Sora he'd meet him there. Riku would do this because he would be worried about Kairi and blaming himself for what's transpired so far. He didn't want to arrive late in case Maleficent would hurt Kairi. However, with Riku witnessing Maleficent's power firsthand and him not actually seeing how strong Sora is, because again, they never would have fought each other this time around and he may believe they don't have the power to stop Maleficent. So that's when Hooded Ansem would appear before Riku and would promise Riku enough strength to defeat Maleficent and save Kairi from her. Riku would take him up on that offer and that's how he would get possessed. After Sora makes it there, they would notice Riku hasn't arrived yet, so Sora would yell at Maleficent, what did you do to Riku? Where is he? Maleficent wouldn't know what he meant and would proceed to attack them. So Sora and the gang fight Maleficent and win. As Maleficent flees, the newly possessed Riku turns Maleficent into Dragon Maleficent just like before. And while they're fighting Dragon Maleficent, Ansem Riku uses the princesses to find the door to darkness. After beating the Dragon Maleficent, Sora and the others would try to stop Ansem, but he disappears through a portal and goes to the end of the world. The game's story would play out the same at that point and Sora would defeat Ansem and seal the door with Mickey's help. Now going ahead without the existence of both Naminé and Roxas, a lot of entries in the series wouldn't exist, at least not in the forms they are now. Concerning Chain of Memories, Marluxia was entrusted with both Castle Oblivion and Naminé by Xemnas, and Axel was sent by Saix to keep an eye on them as explained in 358 over two days. Among the members assigned to Castle Oblivion, there are traitors. Find them and dispose of them. Now, Marluxia's whole plan to screw the organization over by controlling Sora can't happen because Naminé isn't a thing, and even if he kidnapped Kairi and tried to force Sora into cooperating with him, I doubt Xemnas would have let that happen this early, as they needed Sora to keep battling Heartless so that the hearts would go to them to complete their kingdom hearts. And not to mention, they wouldn't even have Roxas in their ranks anymore to have him as a backup. So this means they wouldn't have lured Sora to Castle Oblivion, or Riku for that matter, and as for Riku, he would still still meet up with Mickey and Diz while on the road and would still want to overcome Ansem on his own. We know Riku is strong enough to do it without Mickey or Diz's help, so they would probably help Riku in finding a secure place to duke it out with Ansem so that Riku can finally be rid of him. 358 over 2 days wouldn't happen either because none of Sora's memories would have been up for grabs and Naminé doesn't exist so Xion wouldn't have been created using Sora's memories, so Xion wouldn't exist at all. So sadly, Axel probably would have felt more alone than ever in the organization, since Roxas and Xion never would have been his friends. As for Kingdom Hearts 2, Sora never would have been put to sleep for a year, so Kingdom Hearts 2's events would have started a year earlier, and Sora wouldn't have forgotten his abilities from his last adventure. It's just now there would be more organization members to defeat this time around, since we wouldn't have done away with a chunk of them in Chain of Memories. So should we call them Organization 12 now, since Roxas isn't around? No, they would still be Organization 13, since those guys were the original original plan for the 13 darknesses. They would probably fill their ranks with Riku replica, if anything, since they ended up doing that in Kingdom Hearts 3. Also, Xemnas already set up the licensing and branding. It would probably be a hassle to rename everything now. Organization 12 just doesn't sound as cool. Riku would join up with Sora much earlier in Kingdom Hearts 2, since he never would have had to transform into Ansem since his fight with Roxas never would have happened. Also, Riku wouldn't have had much of a reason to stay with Diz either, since the whole point was to watch over 
over and protect Sora while he slept. And since that doesn't happen, Riku is free to do as he pleases and travel with Sora. Diz would still create his device just like before and be left to his own devices. While he may not have had the same amount of guilt concerning Roxas and Naminé, he would still blame himself with what happened with Xehanort. Again, you would go through the worlds in Cage 2 doing the same stuff, opening the gateways and such, but the way the story elements play out would definitely change. I do believe that knowing Axel as a whole now, when he would meet up and interact with Sora, he would be reminded of what he was like with Aiza back in the day. And Sora does have the ability of making people his friends pretty easily. I think with enough exposure to Sora, Axel would still betray the organization. Not to mention that when he captures Kairi as well, he does feel bad about it. So Axel would still sacrifice himself to protect Sora on his way to the world that never was. I think another big change would be since Marluxia was never defeated in Chain of Memories and would still want to betray the organization using Sora, he would devise a plan to do it. So to win Sora's favor, what he would do is instead of it being Naminé and Riku who rescue Kairi from her prison cell in the world that never was, it would have been Marluxia who does it. With Sora witnessing Axel's sacrifice, and Marluxia being the cunning bastard that he is, he would play on those emotions to deceive Sora into thinking he also has betrayed the organization, which he would have, just not in the way Sora would interpret. Then Sora would trust Marluxia and move on to defeating the last remnants of the organization members. Riku would probably still not trust Marluxia though and be cautious of him. After Sora makes it to the top of the castle and fights Xemnas in his one-on-one, -on -one, Sora would still defeat defeat Xemnas and then Xemnas would be weakened and start absorbing power. This is when Marluxia would slice through Xemnas finishing him off. And now Sora would face Marluxia for the final showdown instead of Xemnas. And then the game would end with Sora and his friends defeating Marluxia, and Sora would get the note at the end of KH2 after returning to Destiny Islands with both Riku and Kairi. This is where I think things would get back on track in the timeline. I think Dream Drop Distance would have been the same since Xehanort would have reformed by now, and they would do the same plan to try and get Sora. So nothing would change there, and with Cage 3, the only thing that would change is who would replace Xion on the 13 Darknesses. My vote is for Dark Baymax, he is clearly the optimal choice. But if they really wanted a Keyblade wielder, they could just travel through time and grab Dark Aqua. She would probably end up being the most likely candidate to fill in for Xion. I still think Dark Baymax is better though. And that would be the new timeline for Kingdom Hearts, at least that's how it might have played out. To think, all of this would have stemmed from Sora just coming down to eat his dinner and spend time with his mom. While by the end point in the series, things would have aligned back to normal for a lot of the big story elements, they would have changed completely beforehand. We also would have lost some great characters if Kairi's heart never went inside of Sora's, and that would have been a travesty. But this is just how I think things would have changed. Hit the subscribe button so you can eat your dinner. Then let me know, what do you guys think would have changed? And how would it have impacted the story? Also, let me know in the comments who you would pick to replace Xion in the 13 Darknesses. I'm still pulling for Dark Baymax or Brainwashed Buzz Lightyear. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Nath out. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, consider checking out some of my other Kingdom Hearts videos right here. Or if you like crossing franchises over, check out if these characters would have survived being in completely different games. Thanks again, and I'll see you soon.